All right, as I said, it is the last week of the campaign, five days to go. Um, and I guess Saturday, Sunday, it's time to wake up and smell the roses for people who have been campaigning hard and as is their right in an open and functional democracy. One of those parties, and it suffered the trials and tribulations of a campaign, is Democracy New Zealand. Headed, of course, by former National uh, Northland MP uh, Matt King, who's gone his own way and I think had a bumpy one. Matt King joins us now, the uh, leader of Democracy New Zealand. How are you, Matt? Good morning, Sean. Yep, lovely. But down in the home stretch, so... All you are, and you are. Yeah. And, and look, what are you polling at, Matt? We haven't done any polling since we... No, but what do the polls poll. say? OK, but what do the mainstream polls say? We're no, we're ne- we're not going to crack the five percent. We're not even uh, registering, and um, okay. we were two percent, and then, uh, but we're not even offered as an option. Sure, okay. when you, when and we, electorate wise, we haven't done any polling, but on the ground stuff is very strong. We're getting lots and lots of support. Okay, so, so Matt, really uh, okay, Matt, and you've got, look, hope springs eternal. Um, and I'm not getting <laughs> down on you for saying, uh, look, everyone, people give it a crack. That's the great thing about system, that you don't just designate who's going to win and, and you don't have a contest. But honestly, Matt, you know, you know, you're probably going to wake up Sunday morning as a private citizen, as it were. Well, you know what? That's what everyone said when I beat Winston in 2017. Exactly the same from yeah, everyone. Okay, the so, world yeah. loves an optimist. But given <laughs> that... Given that, and I kind of expected that a number of minor parties might towards the end of this week or the middle of this week say to their supporters, look, we've got to be realistic. If Why don't you give your vote to the next best thing to us, which is another party that is going to get well, into why, Parliament? Well, yeah, why, I mean, why would I do that, um, Sean? Because, you know, like even in the last election, right, the whole, I was with the National Party and the National Party's party vote was decimated, 47 down to 27%. And yet I still got 1,500 vote, more votes um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the last election. So, you know, if you'd, if you'd have t- had adopted that attitude, I would have, you know, I would have, well, yeah, why, would you, why would you do anything? Why would you take anything? Well, what so, is most yeah. important to you, getting into Parliament or changing the direction of the country? I want to change the direction of the country and anyone that's backing New Zealand first to be the, the party that's going to make National and Act change direction will be uh, is kidding themselves. Okay, so, so you know. why don't you say to people, if you're not going to vote for us, vote for Act? Um, because Act didn't stand up for us when it came... When it, when it, when it, when oh, it, so when it's all personal. To. It's it's my opinion that they didn't represent anyone when they didn't when they didn't come out and see the protesters and some of the stuff they're doing talking around around you know various other things they're not they're not the representative of the representative but Winston of me. did come out and talk them talk to the protesters man tokenism and he flip flopped um, two months before he was slamming us so yeah. yeah he came out when it suited him because he could see votes so. so. It's the bluntness of it, you know. Right. And him being heralded as the guy now is just interesting that um, some freedom fighters think he's going to be the guy. Be prepared to be let down. Well, there is this new sort of segment of the New Zealand voting public identified, I think, by the mainstream media as the freedom movement. Yep. Do you think it's going to stick around or as COVID becomes a distant memory, it kind of dissipates? I think that people, a growing number of Kiwis, have woken up to the fact that we've got had a, had a, had the worst government, the most tyrannical government in history, and they do not want a repeat of it, and they don't want to. They want to hold the the, the, uh, the incoming government, which I believe will be a national act government with with whoever, um, to want to hold the you know the heat to them because we don't. They didn't um, stand up for us either. They didn't stand up for me when I wanted them to. So, um, you know, they, yeah. we need a we need a government that actually respects its people and and respects their rights and. These guys are the worst they've ever been, but I don't see I don't see the answers sometimes in some of the things that National Act say as well. So um, mm-hmm. there will be this growing movement of people that want freedom to speech and freedom of choice and freedom of movement and freedom to do, get it, go about their lives is a growing a growing group of Kiwis, and I think will be the majority eventually. Okay, um, mm-hmm. you have, your party's had a bumpy old campaign, though. You had a massive exodus of dissatisfied candidates who, who went off and it seemed to me went off and joined New Zealand first and Winston welcomed them with open arms. 
I, 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 it's funny, Sean, when you use the word massive exodus. We lost five candidates. Um, and you know what? Um, ACT lost five candidates. You don't say that. that the word's a massive exodus. Slightly bigger party, Matt. What proportion of candidates did your candidates represent? Yeah, were well, we're, we're, we're actually better off without them, Sean. We're actually better off without them. Okay, no, no, let's go back course. to the point yeah. that you raised. You said yeah. the ACT have done just as badly. How many candidates did you have, and where were the five candidates you lost listed? We we had we didn't have we didn't have them listed. We had, we didn't have them in any order. We hadn't done our list ranking, but we lost five people because we sent one packing, and the other four went with them. And one of them has joined, uh, been gone back on the list with New Zealand First. So, and we're quite happy that she has left us. We're we're actually the morale is so much better. And uh, the team are t- so much tighter without some of those people. So we're, we're very happy. Now, we've got a really good team. We've got 13 candidates, so we can cover our bases. And we had a great election result, so we're, we're good to go. All right. Um, and Matt, if it doesn't work out, which it won't, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to indulge in your fantasy. Well, what is Matt King? Does he stay in the politics game? Look, I think that, that what's happening in this country is the most, in, you know, it's about the most important time. And I think if we don't get a government that, that changes tack drastically and restarts respecting Kiwis, I think that the next election will be a really interesting one as well. And I think the number of people that actually care about our rights and our freedoms will, will, will stand up. And so, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere, Sean. We've got a, this is too important. All right, Matt, look, I thank you. Uh, and I, look, I also just want to thank you for always engaging with the platform, taking our calls when we've rung. Not all politicians do that. Uh, yep. I wish, wish you well for the last week uh, of campaigning. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Good man. Cheers. That is Matt King, leader of democracy in New Zealand, which, of course, will not get 5%. He won't get a seat. Um, but I'll tell you what, just taking part in democracy strengthens it. That really does.